Hey YouTube, welcome back. This is your favorite Fleb Shay, and today I have my younger sister joining me, who's also a Fleb as well. I'm Tina. Hey y'all. So today on our channel, we're gonna have a discussion about two topics. So first topic is taking the tourniquet off while drawing. Yes, you can do it. Yes, you can. So First things first is you have to assess your patient. You have to see whether the patient's vein is suitable enough to remove the tourniquet while drawing. Because if not, as soon as you take that tourniquet off, it's going to start to trickle like a water fountain. So I you feel that vibration too. Right. Yeah. Or it'll just stop altogether. So if you do not feel as though that person has a great vein, nice, fat, and juicy to the surface, like don't even need to turn the kid to see, see it, it from a mile away. As soon as you walk through the door. Yes, like boom, give me that left arm. If you don't feel like it's not going to be that, do not release the tourniquet because you cannot ask the patient to give you the wipe of tourniquet. Sure can't. So <laughs> you pretty much would be out of luck and would have to restick that patient, which I'm pretty sure they would not be too willing to do because most of the time they don't even want to give us the first try. So again, for all you new flags and all us senior flips, if you are dealing with the patient and you want to remove the tourniquet, you must make sure that that person has a vein that is suitable enough for removal because once you take that tourniquet off that is it you cannot put it back on you cannot it's going to be very difficult especially if you're using a straight needle now if you're using a butterfly needle you may be able to finagle putting that thing back on there because the butterfly needle of course gives you the extension to be able to place the tubing down and reapply the tourniquet. But if you do not have a butterfly needle and you're using a straight needle, it is going to be very, very difficult to reapply that tourniquet once you've taken it off. So again, a part of your assessing is looking at that vein to see if it's suitable enough for collection. So if it is past suitable, then you know you probably have a great chance of releasing that tourniquet when you get to about the second or last tube. But if you do not feel as though it's going to be suitable, do not take the tourniquet off. Right, Stacey? It's a no-no. Anything you want to say? <laughs> no, you hit all the pointers. That was, she hit all the pointers, y'all. I don't even got nothing to say. Look, we try to keep you guys prepared and informational, you know, making sure that when you're stepping out here, you kind of know what you're doing. The biggest thing for us as phlebotomists, people think we do not know what we're doing. And there are a lot of us, and I'm going to say us, that do not know what we're doing. So, if you do not know what you're doing, don't do it, you guys. Don't do it, okay? Which leads us into our Second topic, new phlebotomist in the field, we have some great advice. Great, great advice, okay? I always start off with one thing, okay? Don't let nobody outshine you. Don't let nobody tell you how to do your job. Period. Because you came here for one <laughs> See, you get one reason. We came here for one reason. Don't let nobody tell you how to do your job. And don't let nobody outshine you. Just do you. Just, that's that's the, honestly the best thing and cover yourself always document document everything even if it's a hematoma infiltration of you in the hospital make sure you let somebody know the nurse something always document and cover your desk to cover yourself make sure you always get the nurse's first and last name when documenting because there's it. a lot of nurse murrays out there document 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 get the first and last name don't let nobody outshine you and tell you how to do your job that's it that's awesome. my top four. Right. <laughs> That's my top four. <laughs> me. Confidence. Confidence yes. for me is the biggest thing. As a new phlebotomist, it is like a badge of honor. When you're new, we kind of wear it on our sleeves. Everybody can point out that we are new. Right. That is a no-no. You should have the highest level of confidence in what you are Don't doing. Don't even act like you new. Act like you've been sticking already. Because the number one question that we get asked, how many times have you done this? Right. Or how long have you been doing this? Right. You know what I tell them? Oh, I started yesterday. <laughs> Don't do that, you guys. Don't do that. When but, I was at the plaza center, I said, oh, this is my first time. I'll see you my first donor. And it'll, it'll <laughs> shake them up. But we don't want to do that. 
not all the time. But, you know, again, confidence is something we have to wear. We mm -hmm. have so many individuals who can do what we do, and we have to be the best at it. Another thing for new phlebotomists, if you do not feel like you are going to be successful with a collection, do not do it. Okay. Find somebody else to do it for you. Because, again, you're kind of making your portfolio, shall I say. And you always want to have a great portfolio. When people meet you, they should be like, oh, she does a great job every time. She never misses. The only way you can have that type of portfolio is if you choose your sticks wisely. Okay? Been doing it for many, many years. I'm excellent at what I do. I've had very few people that I'm unsuccessful at getting. But when I encounter a patient that I know for a fact, you're just not going to be, you know, on my great list today. I'm not going to do it. Because me and my sister used to work together, and I used to be like, hey, sissy, <laughs> you can come over here. Ask for help. It is okay. Hey, don't take the door. Last time we had to ask for help, that's not <laughs> And that's another thing. You also have to learn how to hold your composure. Please. As a new phlebotomist Please. in many of different settings, no matter whether you work in long-term care, yes, no. plasma, whole blood, hospital setting, you have to know how to hold your composure. Again, these patients are going through a lot. And no matter what we feel like we're going through, I guarantee you $100. They're going through something 50 times as worse. McDonald's might have forgot your coffee this morning. But they just had some pretty bad news. Maybe, you know, det detrimental. Terminal illnesses. Anything. It's never going to amount to what you're going up against. Or whatever issue you feel as though you may have. And that's another thing. Us as phlebotomists, we have a very nasty bubble around us when it comes to our attitudes and how we treat people. And I really want to help New Fledge change that dynamic about us. When you do your job, if you're not happy doing it, you're not going to give off a happy personality. People are not going to feel like you're the best one for this job. Right. And the only way that they can feel that way is if you give them that feeling. You want to walk in automatically positive energy. When you come into work, when you clock in, you leave everything that you're going through at that door, just like they say at church. When you walk in, leave everything at the door. Yes, <laughs> and lead with a smile. Yes. A smile will change the whole dynamic. I don't care if you have the meanest of the surliest of patients. And that's what they always talk about us. You never, you just look so mean. But then when we get to know us and we smile, you know, we're totally different. Million dollar smile. That will change the whole atmosphere in a collection. And then it also gives them a sense of comfortability, like a comforting. And reassurance, too. Yeah. And that's another thing. They want to make sure that you know what you're doing. Because the first thing they look at when we walk in the room is our materials. They already know we're coming through the door for them. They know. So if you don't make me feel welcome or I don't feel as though you're happy to be here, I don't want you sticking me. And that's how they feel about us. So for a lot of you all that work in the field and you are experiencing where these patients are coming in, even if they say mean things to you or, you know, have questions. Because let me tell you something. A lot of people have questions because of the lack of information that's given. So whether it's a question about your race, your origin, your hairstyle, they're asking because they don't have the knowledge. Some people don't know how to ask respectfully or bring up topics that they're interested in in reference to you or anything that's around you or involving you. So the only way that you can put out a sense of understanding is to help people understand. And as a new phlebotomist, you're going to be dealing with people of all races, origins, and ethnic backgrounds. And the only way that you can understand them or they understand you is if you give them a sense of understanding. Show them, explain it to them, and vice versa. It kind of helps you deal with the next set of individuals who might have that same background or culture or ethnicity. And it also keeps you from being offensive. Because yes. things that you say or do can be very offensive depending on the patient and what they have going on, or again, their background. Another thing that we have to be very mindful of is in this day and age, we have a lot of transgenders and we have to be very respectful to them as well. So for new flags, try not to say Mr. or Mrs. 
because that'll definitely shadow the mood, especially if your mister is not a mister and it's a missus. So that's another thing that we have to keep in mind when we are dealing with those patients. So for all of my new flags out there, congratulations to your new beginnings. Welcome to the world of phlebotomy, okay? Another word of advice, study all the time, all the time. When you're starting at these new places, take notes because there will be times where they'll kind of shoot you off. You know, Don't hey, you. come on, let's get started because they need you. And in order for you to be productive, you have to make sure that you understand every aspect of your job from the computer systems to where things are located to who to contact if you have an issue. All of those things are things that you must know in order to be effective on your job. These are things that you must have in your mind. When you're going through orientation, take a lot of notes. Ask a lot of questions. When you get on the floors or you actually get into your setting, pay attention to everything that they are showing you because we as phlebotomists work very independently and you don't always have somebody to say, hey, <laughs> what you think? It's not always going to happen. So you have to make sure that you're well prepared. So during the times that you all are entering this field, during the times you're going through your programs and you start working, please make sure the number one thing is to be prepared, be confident in what you are doing. And if you do not feel as though you are going to be successful, do not. Don't do it, you guys. Just don't do it. Don't do one it. One last thing. You're not going to be perfect when you go straight to the field, okay? Don't get upset if you don't get their vein the first time or don't get upset if you can't stick an elderly patient in their hand the first time because it's hard. You got to get out there. You have to learn. We teach a certain way, but you have to learn what's best for you at the same time. So don't be afraid to try a new technique. Also, accountability. That's another thing. A lot of phlebotomists do not like to take accountability for mistakes. It's okay. We are not going to get every stick, but please stop blaming we it bet. on the patient. Sometimes I miss a stick. I'm okay. telling you. It is what it is. It is. Stop blaming these patients. Take accountability. We might be off that day, or maybe you just could not get it, but don't make excuses. Yeah. Stop making excuses for as to why you were not successful with the collection. Ask for help. It's I still ask for help. Hey. Hey, Sue. Not all the time, though. I need you. Don't give it all the time. Not all the time. No, not <laughs> but. all the time. But, again, yeah. you have to take accountability. That is the only way you are going to get better. Yep. You have to know, I messed up. It's okay. I know I messed up. The thing that you have to do is not mess up in that same area again. Right. So, learn from your mistakes and take accountability for anything that you are doing or looking to do. As my sister said in the beginning, documentation is very important. So for all of you new flags, documentation is always going to cover you. I don't care if, I, hey, hey, if they <laughs> have a scratch on them before you got started, document that scratch because it's always going to be your word against the patient's. If you've got your documentation on point, you will never, ever, ever have to worry about anybody questioning what you did or did not do. Paperwork, always hold on to it for at least a week or so. Just in case anybody comes back or has any questions, you have that paperwork to revert back to. As a phlebotomist, our documentation is going to always be number one. I don't care if it's down to your drop-off logs, that your patients are dropping specimens off if you work in that type of setting. You always want to make sure the patient or person dropping it off signs your logs. Because if you have an issue, who do you contact? Now you have to throw your specimen away because you don't know who to contact to try to get this situation fixed. So, again, documentation. For all of you new phlebotomists out there, please, please, please always document. Don't say I'm going to get to it later. Do it right then and there because you are going. You do it later, not doing it concurrently, and that's in your SOPs. Always. <laughs> and SOPs are your standard operating procedures. 
what your things that you are supposed to be doing, you sign off to do during orientation. And every time you get an evaluation or every time your policies and procedures change, you are supposed to know what they are. And if you don't, you are not following the rules. Not documenting is pretty much saying that it didn't happen. And that's not okay. And you can't say, yes, I did. <laughs> no. Where? Where's that? Where's the proof? I don't know. We need the evidence. We need it. So, all of you new flebs out there, hopefully this little bit of information that we have gave you today helps you out. Please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. subscribe. Put a thumbs up if this video helps you out. Please comment for any other topics that you want us to talk about. Anything that you feel like would help the next phlebotomist out there. Because again, we have to stick together. We are a team. We are a circle that is very, very underrated. And we are super, super important. So for all of you phlebotomists out there, thank you for all that you do. So again, for anybody who has any questions, please feel free to email us at fantasticphlebotomy at gmail.com with any of your questions. And again, share, share, like, and subscribe so that we can continue to share our knowledge and help all the phlebotomists out there with any questions, comments, or concerns. Thank you, you guys. It's your two favorite flips. Peace out. Yay.